Hi guys, welcome to the, another episode. Um, this one's going to be focused on entrepreneurship. Um, at the Young Guns event recently, which I'm a member of, we interviewed uh, four entrepreneurs from totally different backgrounds who'd like to share their story with us. Um, so let's hear from them now. I'm featured as the news editor of Grain Business and we run the Young Guns Awards and we're here today to celebrate the best entrepreneurs behind 30 fast growth businesses. So we're at Kensington Roof Gardens today so you'll see there's live flamingos walking around, we've got a free course, a luncheon. Um, it's a very kind of elaborate event, it takes, it takes a lot of months of planning, we have a, a big judging day to decide who we're, who we're selecting, we get hundreds of entries um, and it's all about celebrating business. They don't make one of the cutaways of the apps. <laughs> <No. laughs> You're going to be the episode. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Naushad Jabir and I'm the founder of Vida. Hi, I'm Romy. I'm the CEO of Pension B. Hi, I'm Joseph Valente. I'm 27 years of age and I'm the managing director of Impra Gas. My name's Adam King and I'm the co-founder of King & Allen. We specialise in the elderly care market. What we're building is an end-to-end -end technology platform that firstly solves for the logistics of de delivering high quality care. Pension B was created to make pensions easy for people. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you actually uh, were on The Apprentice. Yeah, the apprentice, is, the apprentice has been fantastic. I mean, we were running the business for three years prior. Um, then we got to a point where we needed investment, we needed exposure, and we needed mentorship. And where better to go than to Lord Sugar with a show that gets 9 million people viewing it a week. So Jake and I were friends at university. Uh, Jake had had a suit made in Thailand and it, it wasn't very good, but the, the, the seed was sown and we decided that we were gonna make uh, dinner suits, black tie, tuxes. We went back to England and we put 500 pounds each into the business. With that 500 pounds, uh, we bought a laptop and a black cab, a London black cab, that we rebranded as the Tuxi. I'd never actually worn a suit, neither had Jake, so we were really doing it on personality and business acumen. So I worked at an investment firm named Hambro Perks, where I helped uh, launch three other businesses. Uh, my role was to find the right opportunities and then help the founders or the management team launch their business plan and execute their business plan. Those learnings helped me scale and grow momentum within Vida within such a short time frame. So my background is in pretty traditional corporate finance and I did most of my time at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. As an entrepreneur, for me, things never move quickly enough. Um, but at the same time, you know, I feel like it's just flown by. Um, I think in the meantime, I've also become a mother. So I have uh, a young 10 month old today. Um, and so, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, your business is your life. Um, and so much has changed and happened in mine that it's been, you know, a whole kind of whirlwind, really. I think when I started in business, I started as an engineer that was hungry with an ambition to change an industry. As time goes on and as you develop and as you learn, I mean, especially being around Lord Sugar and having that presence and having to level up to meet that presence is expectation is something that's changed me not only as a businessman but you know as an individual and it's helped me grow from strength to strength. I studied English at university. Um, I had no entrepreneurial experience. The word didn't really exist in uh, 2003 when we started the company. I attend a lot of these events with Jason and we've spoken before that predominantly it's, it's a very male populated um, kind of circuit? Um, 
I think that initially people are surprised um, to see a woman running a pension company. Uh, but I do think that we're living in a new day and age uh, where being a woman is seen as a big strength um, and I'm excited to be promoting a female-run business because I think that people who use financial services products uh, are diverse. Um, and so if you don't have diversity within your company, how on earth are you going to make pro you know, products that are good for all the people who want to buy them? Um, so I see it as a strength, uh, but I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm often the only person um, at an event who is of the opposite sex. So, you know, I, I think there's a long way to go, but I think the tide has turned. I, got, I auditioned to be in a TV show. Um, it was a Guinness World Record attempt to, this is ridiculous, but it was to break the world record for continuously watching television. Uh, and it was very kind of X Factor style. I had to stand in front of a, a, a panel of people and persuade them that I was capable of continuously watching TV for 48 hours. I managed to win and I won £10,000 and with that money I decided I would travel the world looking for uh, a, a business or a, a, a service or a product rather that didn't exist in the UK. I went into being a plumbing apprentice, I went through the natural progression of becoming qualified at 18, gas engineer by 19. Um, and then at 22, I'd been an engineer for a little while. I wanted to get off the tools. I wanted to do something special, build a business, build a business. Um, got Lord Sugar's autobiography from Christmas at that time. My mum got me it. And I read that book cover to cover. And what it did was it switch, flicked a switch inside me and gave me clear direction because I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do it. And I saw how one man from a council estate in London was able to achieve billionaire status in one lifetime. So after I finished the book, literally two days later, I applied for a £15,000 loan um, on Tesco Bank website, had it in my bank two days later, quit my job and launched Imprius. We would hire a function room in a pub and turn it into a tailor's shop for the day. And now we have a chain of stores called King & Allen uh, around the country. And we, yeah, we have basically nailed down the 500 pounds to a thousand pounds market. Anything's possible. And with hard work, ambition, drive, a little bit of luck, you can um, pull all of these things off. There's been a huge amount of work that's been going on behind the scenes from across my organisation. And I think everyone's kind of pulled in together today to make sure that you know, it all runs to time and very seamlessly. And, um, I think it's it's been a success. We've had a really good turnout and there's been a really good vibe from the, the guests that have been here today, so we're really pleased. So as you see there, four different entrepreneurs, four different complete backgrounds, which shows that you know success can come from anywhere. Uh, there's no real blueprint for getting this right and there's no, uh, there's no real degree or business school that can teach you how to be an entrepreneur. It's just hard work, guts, determination, and the ability to take work harder and take more risks than anyone else. I hope that's inspired some of you out there. Yeah.